Hey guys, I'm here in my studio with Maria. And uh, we're hanging out, making some portraits. And for this video, uh, you might remember a few videos back, um, I did a video with a couple of A1s where we used hard light on Marissa to kind of create a certain mood. I thought I'd use the same lights, but use them in a different way to kind of show you that the same lights can create completely different look. So for this video, uh, I decided to go with a little bit of a softer light. It's not super, super soft. I'm using just the, the I think it's called the extra small uh, Shamira. I couldn't find what size it was, but it's a shallow. Um, it's got a Profoto A1 in it, like I said. It's relatively close, so it's gonna be kinda soft, but it's also gonna have dramatic fall off because it's so close to her, it's not gonna cover her all the way, and it's gonna drop down into shadow at the bottom of her body. So it's gonna be kinda punchy and then fall off. So that's the, the key light. For the second light, um, I have it over here on the stand, it's also an A1, and I'm pushing it through uh, cookie, which we've used in previous videos uh, before. So that's just going to throw a pattern in the background. It's kind of classic uh, and kind of fun, you know. Um, I did feel like I was losing a little bit of detail on her shadow side, so I brought in a, a silver reflector over here just to kick it back up a little bit. Not too much, just to kind of bring it in. But let me show you what everything looks like. We'll kind of walk through it. I guess I'll start without the reflector too, that way we can... We'll add that as we go. So I'm using the Canon camera the, the, with the 85 millimeter. Uh, again, I'm in using my Profoto A1s. I am, uh, first I'm gonna establish my exposure. I'm at 800th of a second at 2.8 is where I was shooting. So I'm gonna turn this off for a second um, and just shoot with the ambient light to make sure that none of the light in the space is affecting my shot. Uh, I see a little bit of light creeping in, but it's not the end of the world. I think it's fine. Uh, I'm not gonna be super anal with this one. Um, maybe I'll push it up to 1,000 just to be safe. We'll see what happens. I am using the A1s, which are not tremendously powerful, so I also want to be careful about where I'm at. I think that'll be fine. We'll try 1,000 at 2.8. We turn the lights on. Uh, uh, the key light is in my A group. I'm gonna, currently, I'm going to turn off the B group and the C group. Uh, so I'm just using the one light on her face. So let's see what that looks like. Here we go. So that's just the softbox light coming in giving nice kind of dramatic light across her face. We can see that here, very sculpting light. So we can see that. And like I mentioned, there's a lot of fall off, so you don't see much down there. Now, the background is like a dark gray. It actually isn't terrible, but I kind of uh, wanted to get some, some shape back there, so I'm gonna add a secondary light, which is in my C group. So that's the background light, so let's see what that looks like. That's just the background light. So we can see how that creates that pattern back there, nice and simple. And then if I turn them both on, now you might be wondering why I have that one in C and this one in A and no one in B. If you remember, I typically like to use B for my fill light. So since I'm not using a fill light, I don't have anything in the B group. So final checks here. I think we're losing a little bit of detail. I mean, hair is shiny, so it doesn't need a lot of light on it, but um, I think a little bit of reflector will be nice, right? So I have this uh, silver reflector that I often use uh, that I made from Home Depot. Um, it's insulation board from Home Depot. Works really well, what could I say? Um, it's like a matte silver. You can do the same thing by using tin foil, I guess, but that's too much work for me. We can see that fills in just a little bit. It's almost imperceptible, but enough that we get detail over here, which is what I want. So now that we've got our basic setup, we'll just shoot a few like this, right? Keep it nice and simple. Uh, good, just pretty like that. She can move around a little bit. I am shooting a 2.8, so I'm not gonna go too crazy. I wanna be careful with my focus. So the reason why I'm at 2.8 is because I wanted my background to be slightly out of focus because if you remember, I'm throwing a pattern back there, right? So if I were to, let's say, go to a 5.6 at 250, which would be the equivalent ambient exposure. You can see that the background gets sharper. So if you like that, um, then you don't have to worry about high speed sync and you can get her whole head in focus and life is good. So either way, it's the same exposure. Um, I know that I did a video before where people were questioning the about using the high speed sync and stuff, but yeah, exposure is exposure. So 250 at, uh, at five sixes is, is the same as 1,000 at F8. Uh, at 1,000 to 2.8, not F8, that would be completely wrong. But let's go back to 1,000. I would shoot at 1,000 at F8, but these lights would not handle that. Good, good, good. 
Nice. And we went back again using TTL. I'm, uh, I'm able to switch those exposures and everything just changes and looks good. This is just pretty clean out of the camera. I don't think I'm going to do anything else to it. Um, I do have the background, just to note, the background is down two stops on my TTL exposure, so I have it at minus two, and my foreground light is set at on exposure, and it's actually maxed out at 10 on that light, so, you know, that's basically where we're at there. So, that's pretty cool. Um, when you have lights, I'm doing my spin around, you like that? That was like a move I would do. So, when, you know, you got different lights, you can basically use the same light to do a lot of different things by adding modifiers, right? So in the last video, we just used the lights by themselves with nothing on them using the raw power of the light and the shape of the light. Here I added um, softbox, which is gonna give me some directional control and also some softness because it's increasing the size. And then a cookie on the background to give us some pattern back there. So, uh, you know, try to get the full use out of every piece of equipment you have before you start buying more stuff. Cause that's always the question people ask me, what should I buy? And of course, we all love to buy stuff, right? But sometimes you just need to modify the thing you have to get the look that you want. So thanks for watching. I will put your info in uh, the description, Marie's info, if you want to follow her, because uh, why wouldn't you want to? Um, and be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time.